going to visualize how to modify a make file in order to compile another executable using make all and then cleaning up all the uh, object files and executables with make clean. These are the files that we wrote in lecture four. And uh, using FileZilla, I am going to open the make file that we created together. And so what we're gonna do when this opens is that we are going to quickly review the make file and then modify it with another executable. So again, CC is the explicit variable with GCC, and then we combine all of the production quality compilation flags into flags. We use colon equals to set it equal, and then we have standard C11, and then we have all the flags here, which I brought from the previous line. So all of these are then put here, and you can modify this simply uh, if you want to update the uh, standard. This update, the standard updates rather regularly, but the most recent uh, version we have in, on the Notre Dame machines is to the 2011C standard. So we created if else, and we created double comp, and then we have the executable names, we have this make all and make clean. So let me go through this step by step, and I'm going to pick float compile to do our compilation. So first what we're going to do is we're going to create the float compile object. And so I'm going to call this float compile dot O. And then we do a colon here because this is now going to tell me all the files that I need in order to do this. So I'm going to say float compile dot C because I need that dot C file right? we're translating from human readable into the object file. When I press enter in uh, Pulsar, it automatically does the tab for me. So we see that it works. We're going to use the explicit variables CC and then C flags. And then we use the dash C that's going to link the C file and create use that to create an object. And we're going to see why we want to link those later. But for now, we're just building good habits that we're going to build upon when we do header files next week. From there, we're going to create the, the list of objects, float compile objects. And again, this is going to seem like a intermediate step, but next week when we do these, this will become clear. So let me zoom in a little bit here, float compile objects. And then this is going to be colon equals, because again, I'm making a list. And then this one is just going to be float compile.o. And when we use header files, you're going to see that we're going to have a longer list of these, and this will make writing the compilation much easier. And so at this point, if I save it, we use the make file, and I run the command make float compile.o. I do ls, we're actually going to see that there's an object file there. If I run make clean, it's deleting the .o files, and you see that it's gone. So now in order to write the actual executable, we're going to say uh, with the pound float compile executable. And now we're going to call it float compile because that's going to be the command. And then the file names that I need are all the object files. So we do dollar sign like this, and then you can just copy float compile objects. We press enter. We see that we have a tab. If, if you get a, an error message missing separator, that means you have spaces there. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do uh, dollar sign cc. Dollar sign C flags, or do dash O, and then the way this is going to work is we're going to do the executable and then the object file. So you see up here we have the executable for double comp, and then the object file. So this is the ordering that we're going to do it. So we're going to call our executable float compile. In fact, you could have a different executable here, but for simplicity, we'll keep it the same. And then we can copy this 
and space. And now in the next line, dot slash float compile is actually going to run the executable. So here's the way that compilation works. You run make float compile. It says, well, in order to do that, I need all these object files. It goes here, puts the list. There it is. Now it goes here, finds float compile.o. I need float compile.c. It uses our production quality compilation flags and the C file in order to create float compile.o. And then once that's done, it uses the object files to create the executable. And then we run it. So let me uh, save that real quick. Oh, hold on. We're going to save this. Update it. And then to test ourselves, we're going to say make float compile. And now it runs. If I run make clean, we're going to see that the executable is still there but the object file is gone, which is why we're gonna make these last edits. What you should do is you should copy float compile into this list of executable names. And then when I run make all, it just runs all the executable names. So here it says, well, I need float compile to do that. So then we go here and then it reruns that set of steps that I just did. And so the other thing is when I do it like this, when I run make clean, it will then delete all the executables. So let me update that on the server. And I run make clean. And notice how float compile is now in the list. And float compile is gone. If I run make all, it runs first if else. It compiles if else and runs everything that we did in class. Double comp, this is the file that we downloaded and went over. And we compile float compile like we just did and we get the results that we expect. So if you do that on homework two for problem one, two, three, four, and five, and you run make all, it will should compile them all. And then we see this, if I type ls, you see all those executables and object files in green and then .o here. And if I run make clean, I press ls, all the object files and executables should be gone, and that will be a full credit submission.